Hi everyone, welcome back to Octopus Builds. My name is Bob Walker and I am the Technical Director of Customer Success here at Octopus Deploy. And we are building out the Trident project for the fictional company Octo Pet Shop. In the previous episode, we went ahead and we configured a variable replacement for our process. And I want to kind of follow up a little bit about some of the work that I did off camera, uh, mostly so I wouldn't bore everyone to death as to watching me fill out all these variable forms. So when we ended the episode, I only had one of these values split up and uh, scoped to a specific environment. Now what I've done is let's go ahead and just expand this out just a little bit. And you can see that this variable is now a combination of multiple variables. Now one of the nice things about this is that we can see if there's any if there's going to be any sort of syntax errors. Uh, this has happened to me a couple of times where uh, I had encrypted the entire connection string as a, as a sensitive variable and then when we did a deployment to production I had some sort of dumb syntax error I think I did something like instead of user ID it was user IP in the production variable and that's just oh that was talk about a stupid mistake and when you see it happen you're just scratching your head so the nice thing about this is that it kind of eliminates that possibility or reduces it as much as possible by having a combination of a variable here so yep I just wanted to show you that that work has been finished and if you're following along um, I would encourage you to do the same thing as splitting up the variable into having this kind of combination of variables so all right so in the last episode I talked that I wanted to look at doing artifacts that has changed I've changed my mind um, and let's say for example that the Trident development team has been working with the web administrators and the web administrators notice that we have let's take a look at our deployment targets uh, I'll break it down by environments so we notice that you know development and QA they only have one server each so deploying to that one server at a time it's not the end of the world it's not it's not a big deal however the web admins have been saying that you know we've they've put a quite a bit of effort into building out this firewall structure and scaling the resources appropriately so any single server could handle the traffic and what they want to do is they want to get to a point where they can have sort of zero downtime deployments where they can do a rolling deployment so deploy to the first server and deploy to the second server and this is fairly common with a lot of uh, companies that we work with where they'll want to have something like that where they're doing a rolling deployment uh, they're going to deploy out to one server and then uh, make sure everything's working there and then deploy out to the second server then make sure everything's working there as well so let's set up the framework to get that all working um, now the key is is that we're only really going to have to deal with the firewall in staging and production we've never had to deal with that before where we're going to have steps that only run in sp specific environments uh, because QA and development they only have one target and that's, that's fairly common where QA development lower environments like that they don't match up with the upper environments because the load doesn't really justify having that spend of additional compute resources where a lot of companies they want to have an environment that at least one environment that mirrors production which for our use case is staging so let's go ahead and let's jump into our trident project and let's configure this for rolling deployments so I have two steps right now, deploy the trident.web package, and then we want to notify developers of status. So what we want to do is we want to come in here and let's add a child step. And this is going to just be a simple run a script step. And <laughs> for this one, I'm going to just say remove from load balancer. Now, because I added this as a child step to the deploy Trident Web uh, step, by default it picks up the role Trident Web. So by default it's going to run this script on the Trident website. We can also run this on a worker on behalf of each deployment uh, target. Now that's fairly common as well. We've, we've seen that happen where we want to run a, a script on a worker that's outside of the um, say the target 
the deployment target, the server, the web server that's running that. Uh, so perhaps the web server doesn't have the capability to directly connect to the firewall to make any sort of change. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's configure that as well. I'm just going to run this on the hosted Windows uh, worker that's been provided to me uh, because I'm running this on Octopus Cloud. Now I just want to run this directly on a worker. Uh, we can get into execution containers in the future. So I'm just going to run this step directly on the worker. And this is going to be a fairly simple script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the machine name, machine name, and I'm going to use control I because that will give me a list of all of the variables. And what I particularly care about is the octopus.machine.name. So this is the machine that's being deployed to at that particular point in time. Um, this is a sample script, so I'm not actually going to do any uh, <laughs> removal of firewalls or anything like that. All I'm going to say is removing machine name from the firewall. So this is the syntax for PowerShell. Uh, earlier we did just a simple write host, remove machine name from, we just did a simple write host, hello world, sorry. Um, but uh, in this particular case, we want to leverage a variable. So we're going to use machine name, and then this is how you pull a variable that's provided to you. So every PowerShell script or every bash script, C sharp script, F sharp script, and Python script, they are sent the what's what we call the octopus variable manifest and the octopus variable manifest consists of all of these variables th that anyone in the scripts can use so as you can see we have a ton of variables that sit out here um, and this is goes back to our system variables that are provided to you um, and i use that shortcut control i to also pull up that list of variables within the script editing. That way I can keep my hand on the keyboard, makes it super easy. We also provide a little handy dandy uh, reminder on something like that. But this is just a very basic script. Um, just to demonstrate, this is how you run a script when you want to say remove something from a firewall. Uh, for a lot of customers, they might be using uh, a firewall technology that Octopus has, has, we don't have step templates for or we don't have community library uh, templates for. And that's uh, fairly common because firewalls and the syntaxes can change even between versions. So you might have an F5 that's running an older version that doesn't support a certain uh, API script or a certain API call or anything like that, or they expect like a CLI tool or something. There's a whole range of things out there. So typically what we see customers do is they'll write their own script to kind of handle that uh, capability. It also provides them the ability to add in some additional business logic where they can maybe check and wait for the machine to be removed from the firewall before it's added back in. So let's jump down now to environments. Now what I want to do is I want to skip specific, actually you know what, let's go ahead and run only for specific environments. I only want to run this step in staging and production and that's because staging and production are the only ones with multiple servers. It doesn't make sense to go through the whole rigmarole to remove a machine from the firewall because uh, dev and test might not even have a firewall or they only have one server and it sit behind a firewall and it's just it's kind of a waste of time so that removes the script from the load balancer now we want to be able to add the script back into the load balancer as well so i'm actually going to go ahead and clone this step because i'm lazy and indifferent and there we go so we've cloned the step so i'm going to say add to load balancer. Remove that clone because we don't need it. Do the same thing, run a worker on behalf of each deployment target, run directly on a worker, and so on and so forth. And in this case, I'm just going to say adding machine name. I could I should actually call that uh, load balancer back to the load balancer. And I'm actually going to say, oh, doing things live. It happens. So let's just, I think I said fire. Yep. I. I even called it firewall. I even called it load balancer, but in my script I call it firewall. That's a mistake. <laughs> oh, what are you going to do? So we do want to reorder these child steps because right now the remove occurs after we do the deployment. That doesn't make any sense. So what I did is, again, I came in here, I clicked on, I call these hamburgers, clicked on the hamburger icon. And then you're given a sub menu. I can come in here and I can reorder the child steps from here. I can also come in and I can reorder the parent steps this way uh, by clicking on the hamburger icon up there. Now, finally, what I want to do is I want to 
come in here and I need to change a few things. One, I don't really like this name. I, yeah, you know what? No, I, I do like that name. Um, deploy trident.web. That's what I'm going to be doing. Maybe I might just say deploy trident website. Let's make it a, instead of the, the package name. Now we can say, how is this going to happen? This is the key for rolling deployments. I want to configure a rolling deployment. And I only want the window size to be one. Uh, so I only want to deploy to one server at a time. You could do things like I want to do five. Oh, let's try that again. Oh, I don't have my uh, numpad turned on. <laughs> oh, that's weird. That's weird. I don't know what's going on there. Um, I, maybe I want to do one. Maybe I want to do five. Who knows? Uh, but for this particular thing, I just want to just want to configure rolling deployment to do one target at a time. So let's go ahead and click on save. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a new release. And again, you, the reason you have to create a new release is because the deployment process is snapshotted. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. And let's push this up to development. And we're going to see those steps skipped um, within the Deploy Trident website step. So it's going to take a second to acquire the packages, um, acquire the work release. There we go. So we should be good to go. And we can see it get, go ahead and get kicked off. So as you can see, it went ahead and it didn't do any of the load balancer work, which was expected because again, if we go back to our process, we can see clearly that this is only going to run on staging and production, uh, those two steps. So we're going to have to push this up to staging to verify that those steps run. We don't really have to verify. I know they're going to run, uh, but just to verify that those steps work. Um, now, if we do run into any sort of errors, uh, we need to change the deployment process, we will have to come back through and create a release. Again, that's for the snapshotting of uh, the deployment process. Every time you create a release, we snapshot that. In situations like this where we're slowly building out the uh, deployment process, that can be kind of somewhat of a double-edged sword because we have to end up creating a lot of these kind of sample releases as we're building this out. Uh, but in the future, after this has gotten stable and everything seems to be working fine, um, it will be very beneficial not ha not having to go through and uh, worry about, hey, did something change in this deployment process that I don't know about? So now we can see right here, we're going to remove this from the load balancer. And it's running on a worker and it's leasing the, the worker as we expect. And we should just see remove this server from the load balancer, adding it back to the load balancer, and then we're going to see the same thing happen over here. Remove from the load balancer, adding back to the load balancer. So uh, we've created a rolling deployment that anyone can leverage. Uh, this is just the framework. Naturally, as again, we just wanted to go in and we, we wanted to make it nice and easy to, to configure this. Now, this gives the opportunity to say a web admin, if they have the scripts and the necessary tooling available, they can come in here and they could update this script. We just wanted to kind of stub it out for them um, just so it's there uh, so we get, get the ability to use it. Or they might have a built-in step template, which we'll get into in, in the future to ha show you how to kind of share these types of steps so you don't have to rewrite these scripts from scratch or anything like that. But yeah, so that is it for the rolling deployments. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. And I look forward to next week's episode. Have a great rest of your day.